All right, get your Bibles, open them to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4. Nasa aklat tayo na sa Bagong Tipan, sa unang aklat ng Bagong Tipan, which is the book of Matthew, the very first book of the New Testament. And we're in chapter uh, 4, verse number 1 to 11. We're looking at the preparation of the king. So in chapter 3, nagpe-prepare ang Panginoon na maglingkod publicly at ang unang hakbang na ginawa ni Jesus para siya ay makapaglingkod sa Panginoon ay magpabaptize. So Jesus was baptized in chapter 3 in preparation for service. So again, we don't serve uh, without first receiving believers' baptism. So pag tinanggap mo si Jesus Christ sa buhay mo, kaligtasan yon. That's for salvation. Pero hindi pa yan for service. Ah, kulang yon as far as yung paglilingkod natin sa Panginoon, as far as yung rewards natin pagdating natin sa langit. Ah, <clears throat> iba yung save ka, nandun ka sa langit, na-enjoy mo yung buhay na walang hanggan, pero iba rin yung nagbibigay, kalu- um, nagbibigay kaluwalhati yan ka sa Diyos habang nandito ka nabubuhay. So, as a Christian... We ought to want to give God glory and you cannot give God glory if you are not obeying His word. Now, we don't obey to be saved. Salvation is not by obedience. But once we are saved, once we become born again and truly know the Lord as our Savior, then we need to obey Him in order to receive rewards for service to Him. And so we have that to look forward to. So Jesus now, in chapter 4, continues to prepare himself for service by defeating the devil, by defeating the tempter, and overcoming temptation. So, sabi dito sa chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of The devil. So sa chapter 1, nakita natin yung genealogy and the virgin birth that proves that Jesus is legally the Messiah. Qualified to reign. That's the legal aspect of being the Christ. Then in chapter 3, nakita natin sa kanyang baptism yung approval ng Diyos Ama. So not only is He approved by the prophets, He is also approved by God the Father. So, sabi nga ng God sa kanya, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So, we find that Jesus is legally approved to be the Messiah. He is divinely approved to be the Messiah, to rule and reign, and to inherit the world. But here in chapter 4, at the temptation of the king, Makikita natin dito that he is morally qualified to rule and reign as the Messiah. So legal, divine, and moral approval. So kung hindi siya dadaig sa kay Satanas, paano siya magiging Messiah natin? So he has to overcome the devil. Question, yung unang tao sa mundo, sino yung pinakaunang tao sa mundo? Adam. Nadaig ba niya si Satanas? Nadaig ba niya yung tempter? Hindi. So kaya dumating ngayon yung ikalawang Adan. The second Adam came. The last Adam. The second Adam. And where the first Adam failed, the second Adam overcame. And is triumphant over the devil. And so Satan will test the truthfulness of God's statement This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So, hindi naniniwala si Satan doon sa sinabi ng Diyos Ama na si Kristo ay ang kanyang anak at nagbibigay lugod sa kanya. So, tetestingan siya ngayon. Satan will tempt in an effort to overthrow to overthrow the Lord. What? 
May schedule yon. May appointment yon. <laughs> All right. And the Lord uh, was providentially led by the Spirit for the purpose of being tested or proven in three areas. So ngayon, yung Holy Spirit, He led Jesus to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. So kung basahin natin halimbawa yung account ni Luke, sabi ni Luke, the Spirit driveth him. So, kung baga, yung pinakaunang ministry ni Jesus Christ ay daigin niya ang tempter sa buhay. Overcoming the tempter, overcoming Satan. And he does, and so the devil tempts him in three areas. Naalala ninyo yung definition of sin according to 1 John? There is the lust of the flesh, there is the pride of life, and then there's the lust of the eyes. So there's the lust of the... Uh, ano yun? Tingnan natin. We're going to look at that. Let's look at that. 1 John. Let's look at chapter 5. Chapter 2, yeah, chapter 2, verse 16. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, gagamitin ngayon ni devil yung lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So, nung tinempt niya si Adam. Anong pinakita ni Satan kay Eve? What did the devil tempt Eve with? He tempted her with the lust of the flesh. You need to eat this so that you can be wise. And then he tempted her with the lust of the eyes. She saw the fruit and then she took the fruit and then with the pride of life she ate the fruit and gave it to her husband and the husband at the same time he knew he was responsible he was told by God not to eat of that fruit but he had the lust of the uh, uh, flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life and he partook and when he partook man fell into sin all mankind fell into sin now Jesus on the other hand at the yung tatlong Uh, tatlong temptation ni Jesus Christ, katugma yan sa lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So tingnan natin muna yung first temptation. Let's go to chapter uh, uh, chapter 4, verse number 2. And before we read uh, verse 2, let's pray and ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing it is to have the word of God and to study the wiles of the devil, the schemes of the devil, that we would have victory over temptation in our lives, that we are uh, aware of the spiritual battle that's taking place every day, every moment, behind the scenes, the spiritual warfare. And I pray that uh, we would stand firm in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in His grace and in His mercy, have victory over the devil's schemes and the devil's tactics. And we ask that you bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So three areas. Number one, yung personal temptation. Patungko sa pagkatao ni Jesus Christ. Uh, sabi dito, this is the lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh. So ayon sa Bible, so verse number two, look at what it says. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, He was afterward unhungered. Eh, siyempre, magugutom ka. Nag-fasting ka ng apat na put, uh, apat na put araw. And 40 days and 40 nights of not eating, that will cause you to be weak and hungry. And so his flesh was screaming for food. So naalala natin yung katawan ni Jesus Christ. Hindi yan automatic na robot. Nung nagkatawang tao ang Diyos, naranasan ng Diyos ang limitasyon ng at ng pagiging tao. So kung tayo napapagod, nagugutom, ganun din na, naranasan ni Kristo ang kung paano mapagod magutom ang tao. 
So Jesus relates to us because in his humanity, in his flesh, he felt hungry. By the way, be careful sa mga panahon na ikaw ay mahina, gutom, o pagod. Dahil yung mga pan- kapanahonan na yan ay kapanahonan na kung saan nag a si, De- si Satan, si Devil. Uh, so, be careful when you are hungry or tired or worn out. The devil comes in to tempt and to destroy your Christian testimony. So, verse 3, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God. Did you notice kung saan naglagay ng tuldok ang Diyos, naglalagay ng question mark si devil? If thou be the Son of God. Wait a minute. Who called Jesus the Son of God? Sa chapter 3. Sino nagsabi na siya ang Son of God? Sino? God, the Heavenly Father. Di ba sa baptism niya, sabi niya, the voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. So, naglagay ng tuldok ang Diyos. Ito ang aking anak. Ano yung opening temptation ni Satan? Kung ikaw ay tunay na anak ng Diyos. Okay? Question mark. Okay? So, again, alam natin na style talaga ng devil na pag tinuruan tayo ng tuto- katotohanan ng salita ng Diyos, magtataka, maglalagay ng pagtataka ang demonyo. Talaga bang anak ito ng Diyos? Hmm. Talaga ba itong tutong nangyari sa kanya? Or whatever? S- sino pang gustong tumuloy? Tuloy na. Uwi na kayo. Bahala ka kayo. <laughs> Anyway, so, <clears throat> will, will we be patient with our young people? They are tender plants, and they are wild. <laughs> so we will be patient with them. Anyway, so, uh, um, sinabi ng Diyos itong aking anak, sinabi naman ni Satan, kung ikaw ay tunay na anak ng Diyos, so be careful sa pagbabasa ng Bible, sa pag-aaral ng Bible, kung saan makikita mo ang malinaw na utos ng Diyos, huwag mong questionin yung utos at salita ng Diyos. Bagko sumunod tayo sa salita ng Diyos, sumunod tayo sa utos ng Diyos, and we will be blessed because of that. Command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So, sa, sa sagot ni Jesus Christ, umapila si Kristo sa mga nasusulat. It is written. Jesus did not appeal to his own power as God. Remember, he is the God-man. He is God manifested in the flesh. He is Emmanuel. God with us. So remember these things. <clears throat> so, um, God manifested in the flesh. So saan nakuha ni Jesus Christ yung sagot laban sa demonyo? He got it from the word of God. Umapila siya sa salita ng Diyos, hindi sa kapangyarihan niya bilang Diyos. So anyway, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 8. Punta tayo sa Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 8. Oh, I'm sorry. That was not right. Let me go back here. 8.3? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 3. Correct na lang yung notes ko. Deuteronomy 8.3. This is where Jesus got it from. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee known that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord 
doth man live? So, question. Noong binanggit ni Jesus Christ yung Bible verse na Deuteronomy 8 verse number 3, eksakto ba niyang binanggit yung verse as far as scripture and verse? Is it exactly word for word? No, it was not word for word. Pero, lahat ng mga words na sinabi niya, nandoon. He quote, he did not quote Deuteronomy 8.13. He cited or he alluded or he paraphrased Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3. Okay, so maging malinaw yan ha. Kasi kung babasahin mo yung susunod, yung susunod na mga um, chapters, alimbawa sa gospel, iba rin yung mga sinabi niya. Go to Luke chapter 4. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verse number 4. Luke chapter 4, verse 4. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So medyo iba na naman yung sinabi niya sa Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Pero yung words ng Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, nandoon. It's just, he didn't exactly say it. He paraphrased it. So, marami mga nagtuturo talaga ng Bible. O, tingnan mo, oh, hindi exact, hindi talaga word per word. Therefore, hindi preserve yung Bible natin. Walang promise ng preservation. That is not true. Jesus paraphrased or cited or alluded to Scripture. There are times when he quoted Scripture. There are times when he paraphrased Scripture. But whether he quotes or paraphrase or cites Scripture, it doesn't invalidate the Old Testament Scripture. Kung ano yung tinuro ng Old Testament, yan din ang tinuturo ng New Testament. Furthermore, napansin nyo yung sinabi niya dito sa Matthew chapter 4, verse number, uh, let's see here, verse number 4. Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. Notice what Jesus said. But he answered and said, It is written. It is written. Ito ay nasusulat. Tanong, question. Anong Old Testament scripture ang pinag-uusapan ni Jesus Christ sa Matthew chapter 4 verse 4? Anong Old Testament scripture yon? Deuteronomy. Question. Sino nagsulat ng book of Deuteronomy? Kailan niya sinulat yung book of Deuteronomy? Anong taon? Around what year? Around what year did, G- did Moses write Deuteronomy? Around 1406. Somewhere between 1406 and 1440. Kasi in between the wilderness wandering. Gano katagal yung wilderness wandering? 40 years. Exodus happened what year? 1446. 1446. Yung Exodus, yung labas nila sa Egypt. Lahat yan, makukuha mo yan sa 1 Kings chapter 6. Kukumpere mo lang yung dates noon. Verse number 1. 1 Kings 6.1. Doon mo makikita, 1446 yung Exodus, 1406 yung pagpasok nila sa Kainaan after 40 years. Somewhere there, he finished the book of Deuteronomy. Now, ang punto ko ito, ang, ang layo ng 1446 sa kapanahon ni Kristo. By the way, ilang taon na si Jesus Christ sa chapter 4? 30 years old na siya. Naalala niyo yung mga lessons natin na pag-aralan last Sunday. He was 30 years old. So, when 30, at least, ha, at least 30 BC, uh, AD, 30 AD, 1406 BC. How many years is that? Na sinulat ni Moses yung Deuteronomy. At sinabi ni Jesus Christ, It is written. Ito ay nasusulat. So ibig sabihin, kung ano yung sinulat ni Moses noong 1406, hanggang ngayon, sabi ni Jesus 
Yung authority na nasusulat, nasusulat pa rin. Ang tawag natin doon, verbal preservation. Verbal preservation. So yung salita ng Diyos, na kinasihan ng Diyos at sinulat ni Moises, available ba yon sa kapanahonan ni Kristo? Was it available in the time of Christ? Yes. yes. Ilang libong taon. Hindi napanaw yung salita ng Diyos. Hindi, nag, hindi kumupas, hindi kumulang, hindi nawala. Effective pa yung salita ng Diyos sa kapanahonan ni Kristo. And let me tell you today, is it still written? Yes. yes. Kaya nga meron tayong word of God. It is written even today. So yung sinabi ni Moses back in 1406, Is it still available, accessible, and preserved in 2023? Yes. Oh, meron ka bang Deuteronomy sa Bible mo? Oh, yun. Kung may Deuteronomy ka, chapter 8, ay nandiyan yung sinulat ni Moses. So, do you have a perfect, preserved Bible? Hmm? O baka yung Bible mo, hindi. You see? God's Word is still preserved, even today. So we have the King James Bible. That's the Word of God. Kaya wag niyong i-modify yung salita ng Diyos. Don't modify the Word of God. You cannot improve on this. Kadami-dami na nagtangka na mag-improve ng Bible. Pag in-improve nila, tinatanggal yung mga words, pinapalitan yung mga words, kinakaltas yung mga verses. Kesyo dito, kesyo whatever. No. It is written even today it is written and by the way hanggang bumalik si Jesus Christ heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall never pass away shall not pass away sabi ng Panginoon so hanggat makumpleto ang buong Bible hindi ho mawawala ang salita ng Diyos So, and so on and so forth. The word is perfectly preserved and presently authoritative. May authority ang salita ng Diyos. Kaya yan ang dapat natin pag-aralan. Yan ang dapat natin i-master. So, the, the Lord appealed to the word of God. So, sa temptation natin, halimbawa, tinutokso tayo ng demonyo, dapat meron tayong mga na, na, naliligpit na mga Bible verses sa puso natin, sa isip natin. Para kapag Uh, tinukso tayo ng demonyo, masasabi rin natin, it is written. O, tapos banggitin mo yung Bible verse. Para yon, para kang may espada sa espiritu at nakikilaban ka sa tukso ng demonyo. You see? If you know the Bible, you can hide the word of God in your heart. And it is written. Remind the devil, it is written. O, Pag-aralan nyo yung salita ng Diyos. So, saan nag-fail yung unang Adam? Hindi niya ginamit yung word ng Panginoon. Brother Bill, may word ba ng Panginoon nung kapanahon ni Adam? Yes. Ano yung word na binigay sa kanya? Wag kainin. Yun ang word of God ni Adam. Kaya dapat, nung tinukso siya, sabi niya, dapat, kung biblical siya, ops, It is written, God said not to eat. Eh kaya lang, hindi siya biblical, hindi siya saved at that time, kinain niya. Lumabag siya sa salita ng Diyos, bumagsak tayo, lahat tayo. Kasi lahat tayo galing kay Adan. Yung hindi lang babagsak, yung nagpasakop kay Kristo, yung ikalawang Adan. And everyone who is in Christ, Si Kristo, bumagsak ba siya? No. Kaya kung ikaw ay nagtitiwala kay Kristo, hindi ka babagsak. As far as yung salvation natin. Alright? So, his personal temptation, verse number 4, we saw that. Now, sa verse 5 hanggang verse 7, ito naman yung national temptation. This is national temptation. So, we have the lust of the flesh. We have the lust of the eyes. So ngayon, national. May ipapakita sa kanya si Satanas patungkol sa Israel. 
Verse number five. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple. Dinala siya sa toktokan ng templo and said unto him, If thou be the son of God. Nako, ito na namang si Satan. Wala nang bagong style. Cast thyself down for it is written. Uy, marunong din pala si devil sa salita ng Diyos. Sabi niya, it is written. Ha? Huh? Alam ng devil yung salita ng Diyos. May, may power. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee and their hands. They shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. So, the devil tempted Jesus. Ginamit ni Satan yung Psalm. Yung Psalm 91. Tingnan mo ang Psalm 91. Go to Psalm 91. Psalm 91 and verse number 11. Psalm 91, verse number 11. Now, the devil used the scripture. Pero tingnan mo yung paggamit niya ng scripture, mali rin siya. And he did not exegete the scriptures properly. He, he eisegeted the scripture. He put in the scripture what he saw. He did not draw out from the scripture what's there. Tingnan mo ang Psalm 91, verse number 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So, itong Psalm 91 na ito, this is David's psalm. This is the psalm of David. <clears throat> and David would run and flee from Saul and hide himself in a cave. Ang problema, mabato yung lugar na kung saan tumatakbo si David, kayo ba, nakaranas na ba kayo? Have you ever experienced walking on a road that's not equal? Have you ever twisted your ankle because the road is not equal? Oh, yun ang sinasabi niya dito. Yun ang sinabi ni David sa verse number 12. They shall bear thee up, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Ibig sabihin, yung ma- mapilayan ka dahil sa maling pagtapak sa mga bato. That's significant. Kasi, ang isip ng marami, ihagis mo yung sarili mo para sapuin ka ng mga anghel. Hindi yan ang sinabi ni David. David did not refer to somebody jumping off of a temp- temple and the angels bearing him up. The scriptures teach David was running and he would twist his feet and the angels would help him. So that has nothing to do with jumping off of a temple, just so you know. However, you can't, ex- you can't expect truth from the devil. So anyway, so in Matthew chapter 4, he tempted him and to- took him to a holy temple and the holy city. Pinakita niya yung lungsod ng Jerusalem. And Satan tempted Christ to question the Father's faithfulness and care of His Son. So, anong sagot ni Jesus? What did Jesus say to the devil? Look at uh, Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 7. Then Jesus, Jesus said unto him, It is written again. Okay. So, umapila na naman si Jesus sa salita ng Diyos. Hulaan nyo anong aklat ang ginamit niya. Deuteronomy. So go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 16. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So ginamit niya yung Deuteronomy 6:16. Let's go back there. Deuteronomy 6:16. Ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Massa. So ye shall not tempt the Lord L-O-R-D, Jehovah, your God. So yung pangalan ni Jehovah yung nasa Deuteronomy 6.16. So, sino ang tinutokso ni Devil? Sino yung tinutokso ni Devil sa Matthew 4? Jesus. Si Jesus. Ang sabi ni Jesus, wag mong itukso ang iyong Panginoon. So, sino si Jesus kay Devil? Yung kanyang Panginoon. So that Matthew chapter uh, 4 verse 7 proves that Jesus is God. 
the devil's Lord is Jesus. And he has no authority, according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16, to tempt Jehovah, the Lord. Jesus is Jehovah. You see? So, hindi siya pwedeng itempt. And so, defeated na naman si Satan. Jesus is the God-man, a perfect Messiah King who is qualified to rule over Israel. Kaya ito national temptation. Kaya nandun siya sa temple, pinakita niya yung Jerusalem para itempt siya pero nagwagi si Jesus sa temptation for the national Israel. So, personal temptation na naig si Jesus Christ dahil sa salita ng Diyos. National temptation na naig si Jesus Christ dahil sa salita ng Diyos. At yung ikatlong temptation, global. Global. Go over to Matthew chapter 4, verse number 8. Matthew chapter 4, verse 8. And again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world. So ito na yung pride of life. So nakita natin yung lust of the flesh, yung lust of the eyes, pinakita ni, ni, ng, ng demonyo, yung syudad ng Jerusalem. And now, the, the pride of life, yung mga kingdoms ng world na ito, and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Oh, Jesus, alam ko na parito ka. At ikaw magiging hari kasi anak ka ng Diyos. So, balang araw, ikaw magahari sa buong daigdig. Alam mo, pwede mo nang laktawan yung krus. Huwag ka nang mamatay para sa mga makasalanang tao. Bibigay ko na lang sa iyo lahat ng mundong ito. I will give you the world. Hmm. Nawalang krus. Nawalang parusa. Nawalang pagbubuhos ng dugo. Pag-sacrifice. Huwag na lang. Basta, sambahan mo ko, sa iyo na ang buong daigdig. Lahat ng mga kaharian ng buong daigdig. Well, Satan tempted Christ to question the Father's faithfulness concerning himself and his plan to inherit the world, the kingdoms of this world. <clears throat> the Lord rebuked Satan. Tingnan mo ang uh, Matthew chapter 4, uh, 4 Verse number 9. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou fall, worship me. Verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence. Oh, umalis ka na, Satan. By the way, yung pangalang Satan, anong ibig sabihin ng Satan? Slanderer. 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 Enemy. Kalaban. Slanderer. Uh, so, yung mga pangalan ni Satan dito, he is tempter. He is devil. Anong ibig sabihin ng devil? Diabolos. Diabolos, enemy, slanderer. Satan, opposer, enemy, slanderer. So get the hand, Satan. Umalis ka na dito. For it is written. Ayun. Yan na naman, pangatlong beses. Ginamit ni Jesus, umapila siya sa salita ng Diyos. Hindi sa ka- sarili niyang kadyosan. That's significant for us bilang manan ng palataya. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and Him only shalt thou serve. So, ginamit niya yung Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. By the way, napansin ba ninyo yung Bible ni Jesus, Old Testament? Kayo, dalubhasa ba tayo mga Christians sa book of Deuteronomy? If all we had was the book of Deuteronomy, would we, would we do warfare with the devil? Would we fail? For our lack of knowledge of the scriptures? This is a challenge. This is a challenge. How well do you know the Bible? By the way, did the devil use the Bible? Hmm? Yes. yes. Does he know the Bible? Sa palagay nyo, alam ba niya yung Hebrew, Aramaic, at saka Greek? Hmm? Oh, si Satanas, matandang kalaban yan. General yun, noong pangkapanahonan ng... Eh. Do you know when the devil fell? When the devil fall into sin? Do you know when that happened? He was in the Garden of Eden. According to Ezekiel chapter 
Nasa garden siya. He was an anointed cherub. Cherubim yun. Ibig sabihin, apat yung pakpak niya. He had four wings. He had tablets and pipes built into him. He was a beautiful angel. He was a chosen cherub, anointed cherub, sabi ng Bible. Chosen. Messianic. He guarded the glory of God. He was a covering angel. So, sa trono ng langit, meron palang angel na nagko-cover sa, sa kaluwalhatian ng Diyos. Si Lucifer yon. That was the anointed cherub. Basahin mo, Ezekiel 28. Hanggang natuklasan sa puso ng, ni Lucifer yung kasalanan. Kaya saan nang galing ang kasalanan? Where did sin come from? It came from the heart of a fallen angel. Yeah, kung nagtataka ka, saan ba nang galing ang kasalanan sa mundo natin? Nang galing pala sa puso ng isang anghel. Kaya do not follow your heart. Ha? Huh? Marami nagsasabi, follow your heart. Anong follow your heart? Kumustahin mo nga si demonyo. Sir, ano nangyari sa'yo? I follow my heart. Okay. Now you know. Do not follow your heart. That is satanic. So, so, rinibuke niya. Ginamit niya. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. Let's look at Deuteronomy 6.13. Go to Deuteronomy 6.13. Deuteronomy 6.13 Deuteronomy 6.13 Thou shalt fear the Lord God, thy God, and serve Him, and shalt swear by His name. So thou shalt fear the Lord God and serve Him. <clears throat> Tapos, ginamit din niya. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20. Look at chapter 10, verse 20. He paraphrased the scriptures. He cited the scriptures. Deuteronomy 10, 20. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, and shalt thou serve to Him shalt thou cleave, and not swear by, and swear by His name. So, the, serve Him, fear Him, cleave unto Him, swear by His name. It is Him you serve and fear. You don't serve anyone else. You don't fear anyone else. <clears throat> so he rebukes Satan and he orders him to depart. So ngayon, nakikita natin that Jesus is morally qualified to rule as Messiah and King. So he is personally suited, nationally suited, and globally suited to be the Messiah. By the way, so yung personal That's Jesus, yung national, the son of David, yung global, the son of Abraham. So naalala ninyo yung tatlong pattern, Jesus, David, Abraham? There, there you have it, represented Jesus Christ is the Messiah because he personally overcame the devil. He represents the son of David, national and he represents the son of Abraham global. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. By the way, Jesus always responded appealing to the scriptures. So, sasabihin ko ito sa inyo bilang kristyano, ha? the more you master the word of God, the more you read the word of God, the more you know the word of God, the more you can fight temptation and the devil in your life. Magwawagi ka laban sa demonyo kung talagang ay master mo ang salita ng Diyos. Pero kung yan, dyan ka lang, hanggang dyan ka lang, hindi mo, hindi mo pinag-aaralan ng salita ng Diyos. Sa'yo, yung pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos, boring. Ha? Pag sinabi ko, buksan mo yung Bible sa Deuteronomy, hindi ka tumitingin sa Bible. Paano mo alam? Are you interested in the Word of God? Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> so God's plan is to be trusted. And Jesus overcomes the devil. <clears throat> Jesus is legally, scripturally, 
morally qualified to become the Messiah King. So ngayon, na-overcome niya ang temptation. Now, how do we overcome temptation in our lives? What example did Jesus give us? Anong example ang binigay sa atin ng Panginoon kung paano madadaig natin si Satanas? Ha? Huh? It is written. So, maging panatag tayo sa salita ng Diyos. Irespeto natin ang salita ng Diyos, pag-aralan natin ang salita ng Diyos, i-memorize natin ang salita ng Diyos, itago natin ang salita ng Diyos sa puso natin, matuto tayo every day, every day, buksan ng Bible. Kung gusto mo magkape, magkape ka kasama ng Bible para gising ka talaga. Kung may time, gamitin mo yung technology basahin mo yung Bible na naririnig mo yung Bible. May ganon. Ang dami mga Bible apps ngayon. Punta ka sa YouTube, type mo Matthew chapter 4, King James Version. May, bab- may magbabasa nun. Ang ganda pa ng boses. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Yung iba nga, may music pa. <laughs> Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. <laughs> Maging makabuluhan yung pagbabasa mo. Ibig ko lang sabihin, learn the Word of God. Master natin itong salita ng Diyos. Dahil itong nagpapakain sa Spirit natin. I mean, how many times ma-discourage ka sa buhay pero nandyan ang salita ng Diyos na magbibigay ng liwanag, gabay, at lakas sa iyong spirito laban sa demonyo. Wala tayong laban, by the way, kung wala tayong salita ng Diyos. This is so important. This is why we hold to the King James Bible. It is a matter of spiritual warfare. Kung hindi preserved ang mga words na ito, kung hindi inspired and perfect yung mga words na ito, wala tayong laban sa demonyo. By the way, mas malakas ang demonyo kaysa sa atin. Maliban lang sa grasya ng salita ng Diyos, doon lang tayo makakadaig sa demonyo. Not in our own power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit of God as you read the Word of God. So, kumusta ang relasyon mo sa salita ng Diyos? How is your relationship to the Word of God? Do you read it every day? Huh? Or do you neglect the Word of God. Sasabihin ko sa inyo, totoo, hindi ka magiging ma- mahusay na kristyano kung hindi mo binubuksan yung Bible. Kung ang pagbubukas mo lang ng Bible, Sunday lang? Sunday? Kakainin ka talaga ng demonyo. Now, yung ikaw, yung kaluluwa mo, ligtas na, na kay Kristo. Pero yung buhay mo sa mundo, parang impyerno. And it doesn't have to be that way if you would surrender yourself to the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for the Word. We thank You for the principles that we see in Scripture. And we know that Your will for us is to please You and to obey You. And we know we have a devil tempting us. We uh, have his minions uh, around us to tempt us and to get us to fall into sin and to entice us. And, and, but Father, we thank You that we can hide the Word of God in our hearts And we can say it is written and know that you have the authority to, to cast him aside and to give us victory because of your spirit. So, Father, I pray you strengthen us by Jesus Christ to walk with him every day, to develop a relationship with him through the reading of the word of God, the memorizing of scripture, the hiding it in the heart that we may not sin against you, Lord. We ask your blessing upon this message now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Habang nakayoko, ang ulo nakapikit ang mata.